Hi everyone! Today we will talk about functions and how we can use them to change the text color of your terminal. So we will begin with an overview of functions and we will finish with this quick and fun project. So functions, in their most basic definition, are instructions. We use them to perform a specific task. For example, an eat cookies function will include instructions to open mouth, insert a cookie, chew it multiple times and then lastly swallow it. And while each of these actions is a task on its own, we still bundle them under the umbrella of eat cookies. Now let's see some Python examples. First, we define a function with a def keyword. Next, we choose a name for this function, in our case, multiply. We then add a set of round brackets, followed by a colon, and we enter the body of the function. Now the body is always indented, either with a tab character or with a bunch of spaces. And the variables a and b, which we have created here, are only available inside the function. If we'll try to access them from anywhere else, we will get an error. That's why we call them local variables. They are local to our function, but are strangers everywhere else. Lastly, functions also have an outcome. In the case of our cookies function, the outcome is getting energized, becoming less hungry, or maybe just appreciating the taste. In the case of our multiply function, the outcome or output is a times b, and we pass it into something called a return statement. A return statement represents the end of the function. This means that any line of code we include below it will not be under the umbrella of multiply. Now, a valid return statement always includes some kind of data. This could be an integer, a boolean, a string, a list, or any other data type. In fact, even if we return none, which is the absence of data or an empty void, that still counts. The only case where we can skip the return statement is when we print something. But even then, our function still returns the data of none, we just didn't officially type it. But simply defining a function is not enough. We also need to call it. And just like with humans, we call a function by its name, multiply. But unlike humans, we also add a set of round brackets to the end of this call. Now, a function that multiplies the exact same values time after time is not very useful. What if we want to change the values of a and the values of b every time we call the function? We will simply use something called parameters instead of variables. In the following example, we have placed a and b inside the round brackets, so they are no longer variables, but rather parameters. Now, parameters are used as placeholders. We get to decide which values they represent only when it's time to call the function, not when we define it. So let's say we want to multiply 2 by 4. In this case, a is a placeholder for 2 and b is a placeholder for 4. Now these numeric values we see inside our function call are actually known as arguments. We use them to assign values to our parameters. So parameters then are basically placeholders for arguments. And if we select different arguments, for example, 8 and 2, we are only changing the output of the function without changing the function itself. So let's quickly practice everything we have learned with a few coding exercises. So we will define a new function called about me. And this function will take in three different parameters. The first one is name, the second is profession, and the last one would be pet. Now inside the body of the function, I would like to print, hi, my name is, to which we will concatenate our very first parameter, name. Then similarly, in the next line of code, we will print, I am a profession. And then lastly, and I have a pet. We will then leave the body of the function and we can then call it on our own personal information. Now, in my case, that would be about me. My name is Maria. My profession is programmer. 
and my pet is a cat. We will save this file and we will run it. And once we look in the terminal, we can see that all our parameters were replaced by their corresponding arguments. And in a similar way, we can also call the about me function on Gandalf wizard who has a mighty eagle. We will save this file, we will rerun it, we will take a look in the terminal, where we see the same function returns two different outputs depending on the arguments. Cool, but now let's do something a bit more useful. Let's randomly change the text color of our print statements. To do this, we will first import the random module. And then additionally, from STY, which is a console text styling module, we will import FG, where FG stands for foreground or text color. And we can then go ahead and define our function. We will call it generate RGB. Now RGB is a color mode where we mix between red, green, and blue. Each of these primary colors has its own intensity and it can be any value in between 0 and 255. If you guys want to find out more about it, I have a bunch of tutorials on it already. You can check them out. Now, inside the body of the function, we will begin with the intensity of red. Since we are planning to work with random values, we will access the random module. And since this value is going to be an integer, we will fetch the rentInt method, as in random integer. We will restrict this integer to values between 0 and 256. We can then repeat this across the rest of our color channels. So we will copy this line of code, we will paste it below, we will replace red with green, and we will do the same thing for our blue channel. And then lastly, as a return statement, we will return red, green, and blue in a tuple. And then right below, we will exit the body of the function and we can finally call it. So generate RGB, which we will assign to the exact same tuple we are returning. We'll just copy these values and we will paste them in front of our function call. If we'd like to have a quick look, we can print red, green, and blue. And then each time we rerun this code, we are generating brand new values for each of our color channels. But that's not all. We will define an additional function called generate color. And this time we will pass some parameters to it. And as you may guess, these parameters would be red, green, and blue. And then we will get it to return a foreground color FG based on the same parameters we have just collected. We can then scroll all the way down and we will call this function right before our print statement. So generate color where we pass red, green, and blue again. We can assign this function call to color and we will then modify our print statement. So instead of printing our color, we will simply generate it by specifying color and we can then concatenate some kind of a string. Let's say um, randomly changing colors, -ha as an evil laugh. We will then save this file and we will rerun it. And then once we look at the terminal, it looks so much prettier. If we keep rerunning this code, we will keep generating all kinds of different colors without really doing much. So once again, we haven't really changed anything inside the function. And this time we're not even passing different arguments to it. And yet our function returns a different output each time we call it, which is awesome. So good job, everyone. And even if you guys didn't feel like coding along with me, you can always copy my code from the link in the description. Perfect. So we've seen that the primary goal of functions is to organize our code and to split it into tasks. But functions are also useful for avoiding repetition. So if we are planning to repeat a block of code, we will simply place it inside a function and reduce it to a single command, which will of course save us a lot of typing. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please leave it a like, maybe leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, 
turn on the notification bell or share it with everybody you know. Now thanks again and I will see you very soon.